assalamu alaikum ji uh, thank you for inviting me to this very august conference um, and indeed the the topic is very relevant uh, it is uh, very re relevant globally and domestically uh, in terms of the challenges that we are facing so when i was thinking about this topic i came across this graph which i thought was very relevant so if you look at the green dotted line and this graph is a time series analysis of 2000 years and if you look at the uh, green dotted line this is the global in uh, change in the gdp and you will see that there was a, during the last 200 years uh, we have done tremendously well um, and if this is much to attribute to series of activities or changes that happened between um, 1760 and 1840, uh, which we term as industrial revolution. So industrial revolution changed the way we make goods and it automate the processes uh, and we could produce things at a much rapid stage. Um, and at that time, it appears as if the potential of man is limitless. So we can exploit as much resources as we want to create profit. But then if you look at this number alone, in terms, terms of number, this is a tremendous improvement. Um, really, the man has contributed a lot in creating wealth and prosperity. But then something else was also happening around it. So if you look at this green line, um, this is basically uh, a concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And you can see a mirroring effect of the way we've progressed and also the increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Now, Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has reached to a level that mankind has not witnessed before. When carbon dioxide in the atmosphere increases, we call this greenhouse effect, this also increases um, uh, temperature. And the kind of exponential increase that has happened, uh, the mankind has not witnessed this in the last 10,000 years. So, while we are doing very well financially, have we been sustainable? So as an accountant, then the question arises, is world as an entity, is it today a going concern? So many scientists, many organizations have been thinking about it. And they see that, um, and they say that uh, the way these things have exponentially increased, we need to take measures to exponentially um, reduce them. And even if those measures are taken today, it will take thousands of the year, thousands of years for the planet to, um, to become uh, normal again in terms of the damage that we cause to the planet. And so when the CO2 increases, um, we see melting of the glaciers, we see droughts, we see rapid, um, uh, rapid fires happening. And those activities we all have witnessed um, uh, happening at a very rapid stage. And these all have human dimension indeed, but they have economic dimensions also. And these need to be considered. So again, like um, this is a global issue and this requires a global response. Um, if I were uh, to be looking from somewhere in the atmosphere down, to me, this is one entity. If one country or two countries or three countries are reckless, I will not recognize it. If I have to punish it, I will punish the whole, uh, whole planet. So from there, 
I cannot see countries, I cannot see boundaries, I cannot see religions, caste, creed, or gender. What I see is one globe that is messing around with the nature. So this is a very interest, um, powerful article that was published in uh, uh, Washington Post um, in September. And I find it powerful because of the number of reasons. So, um, for example, it's, uh, uh, it states that um, uh, the Minister of Planning and Development has called Pakistan a victim of climate change caused by irresponsible development of the developed world. Pakistan has about 2.6% of the world's population and contributes less than 1% of global carbon emissions. And yet it has paid monumental price. As a point of context, the United States account for only about 4% of the world's population. And yet it is responsible for about 13% of the global carbon em emissions. Now, why I see, um, I find this very powerful and very convincing is because um, they, the message is coming, but also they are giving some reliable numbers, which are based on, um, on standards that make them comparable. So that for a reader like me, I can compare Pakistan and United States because number one, the numbers that are given are reliable, they are comparable, they are verifiable, and, and I can relate to it. They are relevant, and that's why it makes uh, more convincing. But who has, which pr other pr uh, profession has this convincing power? You know, the profession of accountancy is the only profession that that lives around the business of comparability, reliability of statements and transactions. So the good news is that while we've been exponentially growing at the cost of the nature, the investments in renewable energy are also ex exponentially growing. And this is also a ray of hope, but this is also a challenge of how things are moving fast. And in addition, there has been a rapid digital transformation, um, especially during the last 30 years. So the kind of changes that we witness between 18, 1760 to 1840, maybe those kind of changes we are witnessing now. And that may lead to a more cleaner and efficient system of governance and the way we interact with the people. So currently we don't know how these things are showing up, but uh, mobile technology, social media, blockchain, artificial intelligence, these will rapidly change the way businesses are done and people interact with each other. So why is the, all this important for the accountant? Because accountants have traditionally had a stewardship role of safeguarding the assets. But assets don't exist in isolation. The assets interact or exist in an environment. And if the environment is not conducive or if the environment is not providing that kind of sustainable um, solutions to the asset, then it becomes the concern of an accountant to safeguard those things or mitigate those risks. And this has been rapidly coming out from all stakeholders also. So governments are trying to change paths. They are bringing in regulations, the multilateral organizations, for example, um, uh, uh, in World Bank, we have a country partnership strategies, um, a strategy which have five goals. And one of the goal is uh, making Pakistan green. Uh, so again, those things are shaping up, you know, and that's uh, affecting the corporate sector, the central bank, the regulators, the citizens, and the investors. And because of that, a number of organizations have 
globally uh, uh, been trying to uh, bring out solutions or frameworks for more sustainability, uh, sustainable reporting. Um, uh, recently, a study was done and um, uh, the study was very encouraging in many ways. So for example, the study was done jointly um, uh, uh, by organizations, but uh, uh, they studied about 1400 um, uh, businesses in about 22 countries. And they found out that at least 90% of uh, those companies reported some kind of sustainability reporting. Um, of which about 50, of those uh, reporting on sustainability measures, about 50% were being provided assurance services as well. Um, but the concern was that there was number of um, frameworks which were being used. And those frameworks were not consistent and not comparable. So the good thing is that now uh, International Sustainability Standard Board um, has delivered uh, two drafts based on the work already done. Um, uh, the first one is about general requirement for disclo disclosure. And the second is about climate related disclosure. So I, um, I understand that there'll be a more discussion uh, after this session on that. But this is a very good trend that now the world is going towards cons consolidation and comparability. So there are a number of um, entry points for professional accountants uh, to interact with uh, multilateral organizations uh, and the government. Because this kind of challenges that the government faced, because this is a challenge for us, but this is also a very great opportunity. Because for the first time, there has been very strong realization across the globe that we've been impacted because of the wrong done by the others. You know, like uh, for the last 30 years, I've been, uh, th for the last 30 years, I've been uh, listening to this statement, do more, do more. So now it's our choice to use good data, comparable statements, reliable statements, and tell the world to do more. And we can only do more if our accountancy profession works very closely with the government in all the processes that the gov government does, whether it's planning or reporting or auditing or evaluations, um, this is the time that the accounting sense profession should work very closely with the government. So thank you very much from us. Mm -hmm.